welcome. Today's special is a large pepperoni. Hi everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of Game Night Lunarth, the TV show that's all about board games, but definitely not a game show. My name's Jason, and I'm going to be your host today for the fun and games as we play Bargain Quest, a brand new game that's just hit the market from Renegade Game Studios. When the game begins, both myself and all of my panelists that'll be joining me will be playing as shopkeepers. We're going to each have a store where we're going to be selling weapons and armor and helpful items to the local heroes who are going to go out and do battle to save the town. When the fun and games are over, we're going to vote amongst all four of the players on the show today, and we're going to vote somebody into the hot seat, which is the one place you don't want to be at the end of an episode, because the person sitting in the hot seat, and it could be me, I hope it won't, but it could be, the person sitting in the hot seat is going to have to eat a hot wing that's been covered with this terrifying sauce, the Wingmaster Reaper sauce. Now this sauce reaches heat levels of up to 1 million Scoville, which means it's going to be an extreme heat for whoever gets voted into the hot seat. So let's bring my panelists in, and we'll get the fun and games underway. And we're back. I brought in my panel of guests for today, and I can't wait for you to meet them. Joining me on my immediate left is Janice Freeman. Janice Freeman is an insurance broker locally here, and she's also my partner in the game of life. Thank you for joining us today, Janice. Glad to be here. On my immediate right is Caitlin. Caitlin is a local board game player that I've gotten to know through games of magic and board games, and just a really fun person to hang out with. Thanks for joining us today, Caitlin. Thanks for having me. And at the end of the table is a returning feature face on Game Night in the North. Sarah Hood survived her last encounter with a hot wing, and she came back to be a willing victim once again. Thank you so much for being here today, Sarah. Always my pleasure. <laughs> so, now that we've introduced all the participants in today's willing experiment, let's get down to the action. We're going to be playing Bargain Quest, and I love this game. I just love the premise of it. Basically what happens is, each of us are going to be a store owner in the game. It's a fantasy setting. What's going to happen is we're going to each be trying to lure in the local heroes, and we're going to sell them weapons and armor and useful items so that the heroes will be properly equipped to go out and defend the city from the invading monsters. Uh, at the end of the game, we're going to be totaling up how popular our store is, what a good reputation we've built up, and how much money we've made throughout the game. And you add those two together, and that gives us our total to see who's the winner and who's not the winner. And then uh, once the gameplay is done, we're going to be talking for a minute, reviewing and rating the game, and we're going to wind up voting somebody into the hot seat, which is always a fun time. So I think we're just about ready to play. Uh, Caitlin, you and I uh, tend to be the most familiar with the game. We've played it more than our other two guests here today. So I'm going to be counting on you to help me as we explain the game to our viewers at home. Basically, what's going to happen is during the game, there's going to be three different monsters that come up that try and attack the town. And it's our job as responsible store owners to properly equip the heroes who are going to go out and do battle to defend the city we live in. Uh, each round is divided into six different steps. The first step being the supply step, which we're going to do in a moment. We're going to wind up drafting cards where we'll pick one card we want to keep and we're going to pass the rest to our neighbors. Once we have our supplies, the things we want to sell to the heroes in town, we'll move on to the display step, in which case we'll be picking one item that we want to put into our display area. That one item is going to be what we try and lure the heroes into our store with so that they'll want to come and <laughs> spend money at our fine venues. The only catch and drawback is whatever item we put into the display area, we're not allowed to actually sell to them. So we need to also have backup items in our wares that we can actually sell them so that they can go out and do battle. That's all happens during the shopping stage. That's basically it for shopping. They come in, they spend their money, we get happy, they go out into the adventuring stage, which is where the heroes are going to go out and do battle with the enemies. In the first round of today's event, we're going to be playing against the Goblin Chief. The Goblin Chief has a power of four and a toughness of three. I'll explain a little later on what those numbers mean. Once the adventure is done, all the surviving heroes are going to come back to town. They're going to hang on a minute while we upgrade the store to make it bigger and better for the next round. And then finally, we're going to take some of our leftover items that we didn't sell, and we're going to put them into storage so that we can keep them for safekeeping and use again in the next round. So, if everyone's ready, I think we should jump right into the fun by starting off the first supply step of the game. But before we can do that, we have to determine one thing. There's a tiebreaker that gets used in the very first round of a game of Bargain Quest. And the tiebreaker, if it becomes relevant, is we need to know who was the last person to buy something in the real world and pay for it using cash. So Sarah, when was the last time you bought something and paid for it using cash? 
At least a week. At least a week ago. At least ago. a week. <laughs> Caitlin, when was the last time that you bought something and paid for it with cash? Oh, I bought something yesterday afternoon for uh, pizza for five dollars. Oh, with cash? With cash. Excellent. Yeah. For me, it was a couple of days ago. I wound up buying a carton of milk. So so far, you're the leader. You bought something the most recent. Janice, when was the last time you bought something and paid for it with cash? Well, I bought my morning's coffee and scone from Grounded this morning uh, with cash. With cash. Okay, so you'd be the most recent. So you're going to get the tiebreaker. Uh, token, which is called the quest token. So if it becomes relevant as we play for the first round, you'll get a little bit of an advantage because you have the quest token. Now that that's settled and we know who's going to have tiebreaker advantage, we can go ahead and deal out four cards to each player. So I'm just going to quickly deal four cards to each one of us. And then once everybody has the cards, we're going to be taking a look at the items. These four are for Sarah. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a look at these items and we're going to pick the one weapon or piece of armor or magical item that we like the most and we're going to choose to keep it by putting it face down in front of us so that nobody else can see it. So, unfortunately for me, I don't have very exciting items, so it was a pretty easy choice for my first card. Everybody else good so far? Now we pass to the left and in Janice's case, she'll pass all the way down to Sarah. Now we take a look at the next three and do the same process. And we're going to keep doing this until we've drafted all of the cards in the game. That's my second choice. Excellent. And we, you're ready to pass down, sir? Yep. Excellent. And our third choice. Ooh, that's a good one. I can't believe you passed that to me. You fool! <laughs> <laughs> that's my last one. Excellent. Yep. All right, so now we've each resupplied our store. We have items that we're going to be able to sell to the heroes a little later on. So we're each going to review the items that we have in our hands and choose one item each that we're going to be putting into our display area. We're going to keep it secret for a moment, put them face down in front of us. We're each allowed to only put down one item in the display area when the game begins, but we'll be able to buy cool upgrades later on that let us put out more wares in the window. So one factor everyone has to consider is whatever item they put into the display window is the only style of weapon that they're allowed to lure the heroes in. So if I put a magical wand in my window to try and lure in people, the only heroes I'd be able to lure in are the Demon Slayer and the Young Hero because they each have the red symbol on their cards, which means they like to use magic. You can't really sell a wizard's wand to a soldier who just likes swords. It just doesn't work that way. So has everybody chosen their display items? Excellent. So we're all going to just reveal our display items and see who's chosen what. So Janice has chosen a Mighty Elixir, and it has one heart on the card, which means it's slightly interesting to the heroes walking around town. I've chosen a set of Wizard's Robes. They have two hearts on them, which means they're slightly more interesting. Caitlin here has chosen a Blasting Rod, which is a powerful weapon that appeals to magic users, and it has three hearts on it. And Sarah, at the end, I can't quite read it. What's the item you chose? Cursed Elixir. It only has one heart, but I attract every type of character. Excellent. So it seems like we all wanted at least a little bit of red in our life. <laughs> uh, Caitlin, with your Blasting Rod having three hearts, you're going to get first choice of which hero you'd like to have shop in your store this round. Who would you like to lure into your store? I would like the young hero. An excellent choice, always. For me, oh my goodness, I have only one choice. Because my wizard robes only have red in it, I can only take a character that is red, which means I'll be choosing the Demon Slayer by default. Uh, next up, it would be a tie because Sarah and Janice both have one heart on their items. And what was the, the sale price for them? Five. Five gold for Sarah's item? Ten. But for ten me. for Janice's. So because Janice's item costs more money, the people walking around town tend to think it's probably a better quality item, which means Janice will get to choose third. Now, Janice, your elixir has all four character types on it, which means you could have your choice of either the fighter or the cleric. Who would you prefer to have? The fighter, please. The fighter goes to Janice, which means by default, the cleric is going to slide down the table to Sarah. Hmm, yes, the cleric wishes to look at the cursed elixir. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> this is fun. I like this already. So now that we've, we've done the supply step and we've done the display step and we've lured people into our stores, now we move on to the shopping step where we can all take our time for a moment and sell weapons and items to the heroes in our store. But again, they're only going to want to buy items that share a character type with them. So for my case, I have two items I can sell in total. A battle axe that uses the blue character type and an ice scroll that uses the red character type because I was lucky and my Demon Slayer has two character types on it. So each of those items cost five gold each, which means I'm going to be getting a grand total of ten gold from the Demon Slayer. Yay! 
Uh, Janice, how about you? What, what can you sell to your character? I'm going to sell a battle axe and a wineskin. So I will take the 20 and give him f or her $5. Five exchange. and change. Nice. Uh, Sarah, let's go to you at the end. What can you sell to your lucky customer today? Mm, well, yes. The, the cleric, unfortunately, doesn't have as much money as I would like, so he's only going to get a healing potion. I think if you look closely, you'll notice the cleric actually has a really cool ability oh. called Charity, which says that the cleric's willing to accept items based on charity, and you can lower the price of a more powerful item by, what is it, up to 10 gold, up I believe? Up to 10 gold. So, so if you'd like, mm -hmm. if there's an item that costs mm -hmm. up to 25, mm -hmm. you could sell that one item for only 15 gold. Mm -hmm. Well, my heavy mace is only 10 gold, so he can get that for free. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. But really, you'd want to sell it for five so that you could get all 15 gold from the cleric. True. Good point. Yeah, so you can take all 15 gold and put it over with the other gold in your store. And then, Caitlin, we've saved possibly the best for last. Show us what you're going to be selling today. Um, so first of all, I have this uh, fantastic short bow. I nice. say first of all, but that's pretty much all I'm going to okay. um, sell them because it was 15, so I take nice. all the money, all the monies. Excellent. So all of our heroes have spent whatever they can afford to spend in the stores. That brings the shopping stage to a conclusion, which means now we're going to move on to the adventure part, which is exciting because that's when the heroes go out and do battle against the attacking monsters. And they're going to keep us safe, safe hopefully, you know, if we sold them good quality items. So let's find out what happens. Now, Janice, you have the quest token, which gives you a little bit of advantage for the whole rest of the turn. You get to go first on everything, which means uh, once we find out what mood everybody's heroes are in, we're going to be starting with you. So I'm going to deal you one of these adventure cards, which I like to call mood cards because they describe how our heroes are feeling as they head out into battle. So Janice, for you, your hero's feeling pretty reliable. So it didn't give you any boost, but it also didn't weaken your hero at all. Great. My hero is feeling clever. Ooh, he's a clever hero. And my hero's going to get a plus one boost to their defense. Uh, Caitlin, your hero is feeling intrepid. No power boost or defense boost, but your hero does gain 10 gold right away. So if your hero survives, there'll be a little extra money to spend next round. And Sarah, your hero is feeling, oh no, your hero is feeling forgetful. They've forgotten to bring one of the items you sold them. So you're going to have to unequip one of those items. Hmm. How forgetful. I always have bad luck. So then, again, because Janice, you have the quest token, that means we can go ahead and start with your character doing their attack. So tell us, how much power does your hero have now? He, uh, she hits for five. Well, that's exciting because the Goblin Chief only has three toughness, which means five damage is more than enough to wound the Goblin Chief. And we are one quarter of the way to knocking the Goblin Chief out of the game. Also, because your hero was strong enough and had good enough equipment, thanks to you, to hurt the Goblin Chief, your store has gained one fame. You're getting a good reputation already. Wonderful. The only problem is my fighter has a, only a two toughness, so sh mm. she is going to die. Well, she fought the good fight, but that's just not enough sometimes. No. Nope. So, so unfortunately, your hero is going to go to the discard pile for heroes. And the items are going to go right here into the discard pile for items. And then moving clockwise, that would bring us to Sarah next. Hmm. Sarah, tell us about your heroes. Well, feats in battle. my forgetful uh, cleric is <laughs> sadly too weak without his holy mace that I sold him. So he does not damage said chieftain. Okay. But he does die because <laughs> he's not str uh, it's tough enough to tough take the enough hit. to deal with it. But he did remember to use the healing potion, so he doesn't die, he just gets shuffled back into the deck. Excellent, so we might he see that hero again at a later date. Caitlin, how's your hero gonna fare in this exciting battle? Um, so currently it's only a 1-1, one, one. however, because my young hero has great potential, um, all power and toughness bonuses this hero gains from item cards are doubled, so instead of it being a 1-1, one, one, it's actually a 2-2, two, two. so he's Going to hit for three, which is enough to wound the goblin. Oh, that's excellent. Good job. So mm -hmm. we're going to mark the goblin with a wound, and you've gained some fame for that. Yes. Unfortunately, he's still only a three, so On he toughness, will right. die. Just a little bit too weak to survive. It's a young hero. We'll so get there. <laughs> well, or not now. Yeah. Not, apparently not. Not this time around. No, maybe in the next life. So for me, let's take a look at my bo uh, demon slayer. So my demon slayer 
has a power of five, which is definitely enough to do some damage. So we're going to mark a third uh, wound onto the Goblin Chief. Uh, and then for toughness, uh, started with a two, add on another three on power boost. Five toughness, which means my hero is also going to survive to tell the tale. So I'm going to get two fame. I'm going to get one fame for my hero being able to wound the horrible enemy, and one fame for my hero being able to come back and talk about it afterwards, which is exciting. So that's the end of our combat, <coughs> the end of the adventure. Now, the, the funny thing about all these weapons and armor that we sell to our lo local heroes is none of them have a warranty. These things don't tend to last long. So any items that are still equipped to surviving heroes, they wind up falling off, crumbling to dust, and going away into the discard pile, which is actually great because then we get to sell them more stuff next round. So see how that works? That's good. Uh, so now uh, we've finished the adventure step. Uh, one hero survived. Did any other heroes survive? Was no. that the only one? No. Oh, shame on all of you. No wonder my store has such good reputation. <laughs> it's not my fault. He's forgetful. <laughs> so we're, d we're done the uh, adventure step. So we're going to go on to the upgrade step. So once again, Janice, you get a slight edge because of the fact that you have the quest marker. You're going to get the first opportunity to make a decision. Your choices are going to be you're allowed to buy one upgrade total. You can either upgrade your display so that in future rounds you can put two items in your window to have a better chance of luring in the heroes that you really want. Or you can pay to get a storage upgrade, because at the end of every round, we get to put one card into storage to save and reuse later. But if you buy the storage upgrade, you can put two cards into your storage to use later on. Or, alternatively, there are going to be two exciting opportunities to hire a new employee. Uh, the first new employee that you could hire is the city guard. Now, the great thing is the city guard will work for free. And if you hire the city guard in a future round, you get to prevent whatever terrible ability a monster card is going to do to you. But it's a one-time use, the city guard gets tired and has to take a break after. The second uh, employee up for hire for you today is a sales clerk. The sales clerk costs five gold to hire, but if you hire the sales clerk, then while selling items to your heroes in the future, you can either raise or lower the price of an item by five gold. So it'll make it more flexible for you to get as much money as you can out of heroes. Hmm. I think I'm going to pay 10 for storage. It's always a good choice. Storage upgrade it is. Going clockwise, Sarah, you get second choice. Uh, I'm going to pick the one that the display upgrade. Yes. The display yeah. upgrade so that you can put two oh. items in your window from now on? There please, you are. Please. Caitlin, what do you feel like is the right play? I'm also going to choose a display upgrade. Mm. So for me, I think my last one is I'm going to make the best of a bad situation and I'm going to hire a sales clerk so that I can be a little flexible with my prices. I think that could pay off. So now we've done the upgrade part, we get to the storage at the end. So Janice is the only one who chose the storage upgrade, so she can pick two cards out of her hand and put them both into storage. Any other cards you'd have to discard? I don't know if you have any others. No, I, oh, I still have two, so I'm going to put them both in my storage and nice. continue on. So for me, now should we, oh, I guess I should ask the question, as we're going to storage, should we have already revealed the heroes for the next round? I can't remember. We should check the rules for a second, shouldn't we? Let's take, let's take a quick look, because this game's brand new. It's not even officially on the market yet. Oh, yeah, so it was supposed to happen at the end of the adventure step before okay. we the upgrades. So let's take a second here just to flip up three heroes, just so that we know what's happening next round. Looking at the character types, I see some magic users, I see some blue physical damage, I see some green ranged, and a cleric's even in there. So we're going to have all four types of characters available next round. Given that knowledge, I'm going to put one item into storage, because I didn't get the storage upgrade. Is everybody else okay with their decisions so far? All right, I'm gonna discard my last card. So that's it, that's the end of the first round. Uh, we did three out of four damage on a Goblin Chief. In a four player game, you have to hurt a monster four times to knock it out. In a two player game, it only takes two times. So the game scales based on the amount of people playing. So we only need to hit the Goblin Chief one time next round and we'll move on to the next monster in the game. So to start the second round, we're going to once again be dealing out. I just want to interrupt you again um, at the end as well because uh, the monster is still alive. Any surviving heroes get uh, additional gold. Oh, that's right. And only one hero survived. Now, who was it that sold that brave hero all that awesome equipment? I forget. Uh, I'll, I think it was Sarah. I'll check the footage later and see who it was <laughs> that sold all that awesome mm -hmm. equipment. So, yeah, so the one hero who survived gets some gold for doing all the heavy lifting in the game. And then I'm going to pass four cards out to each of us, and we're going to be drafting once again in the supply step of round two. So, these four one, two, three, four will be going down to Sarah. So do we, we do not 
put our ones that we have already kept? No, in we'll pull this? out storage as soon as we're done this part. Okay. Those are guaranteed. You don't lose them. We're going to draft the cards that we've just been dealt. And we're back. I got last choice of heroes. Boop, ruins. I'm awesome. Yes. yes. I know. I, I am that. so kind. Indeed. Well, not you, your hero, though. So mm -hmm. she's going to hit for three, which will do damage to our goblin chief and kill him. Another wound gets your fame. And, and you said your hero survives as well? Yeah. Excellent. So two fame for you. That was a great round for you mm. and your business. This cleric is much more worthy. <laughs> All right. So the, 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 we've made some real progress. So now we can go on to the second round. And the round two villain is a giant spider. So this round is going to basically play out the way the first round did. Just a different monster to kill. Moving cl clockwise, it'll be Sarah. So my guy does a whopping... Eight damage. Nice. Uh, right. But he dies okay. horribly. <laughs> All right, well, this is going to be a quick round because my guy is going to do six, which is enough. Nice. We've just finished the second round, and uh, it's time to reveal who the monster is going to be for the third and final round of this game. So let's take a look and see who do we have to slay to save this town anyway. And our monster for the third and final round of this game is going to be the Demon Prince. Oh my goodness, that just sounds scary. The Demon Prince has a power of five and a toughness of six, so it's going to take a lot of work to hurt this fella. It's only a half hour show, Caitlin. <laughs> well, I'll pick the girl. She did not fail me last time. She has more <laughs> money to spend, so that's relevant too. <laughs> not in front of the customers. <laughs> Four, five, six. Six power. Six That's power. enough to hurt it. Uh, well, I would kill it regardless. Okay, but my guy also do, dies. Mine, uh, six actually would hit it. Uh, so mine does damage to it as well. You'd All right, so that's exciting. We just managed to defeat the Demon Prince. We got lucky that... Uh, everybody wound up hitting it, so because the final enemy is dying, that means we go to the scorekeeping at the end of the game to find out who's the big winner and who's not the big winner. So the way we do that is we add up two things. We need to count up how much gold we've each built up. Uh, you get one victory point for every full ten, you, and you round down on a five. So for me, I've got 40, I've got 50 gold, so that's five points so far for me. 65, so I've got six, six points. points so far. I get five points. Okay, and then on top of that, add on your fame as well. My grand total, after counting in all my points, is I have 11 points for your victory points. What about well you? done, dear, but not quite enough. I've got 14. 14 for Janice. Mm -hmm. What about you, Sarah? Mm, I only have 10. Only 10? Mm. Well, your store did kill a lot of people. Yes, first <laughs> items. <laughs> you all did very well, but uh, I do have 16, so that takes me. 16! Caitlin is the winner of Bargain Quest. Okay. So we're going to take a minute, clean up the pieces, we're going to review the game and get ready, and we'll be right back to tell you our thoughts on Bargain Quest. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. And we're back. We've all taken a couple minutes to collect our thoughts, rate and review the game, and we're ready to share our impressions with you, the viewer. So I'm going to start us off today. For first impressions, I rate this game as a 7 out of 10. Uh, I was optimistic when I first saw it. The box looks pretty, the game pieces seem good, and I was optimistic it was going to be fun. Ease to learn is probably the category on the harshest on with this game, just because there's a lot going on and there's a lot of text to read and it's easy to miss little details sometimes. So I gave it a 6 out of 10 for ease to learn. But quality of the game, I definitely give it a 9 out of 10. The artwork is really gorgeous and the pieces are well made. I really feel like there's good value for the game. Overall fun to play is an 8 out of 10, which is an A in my books. I, I love it. I've played it a lot, and I enjoy it every time I play it. And then likely to recommend, again for me, is an 8 out of 10. Uh, I love the game, and I, there's a lot of people I'd recommend it to. I probably would avoid really younger kids because, again, there's a lot to absorb the first few times you play it. So for me, that's 38 out of 50 overall. So that concludes the review portion of the episode. So now we get to talk about one of my favorite parts of every episode, who do we think should be sitting in the hot seat at the end? 
Janice, in a, just a few words, tell us who you're voting for and a quick uh, reason why. So I'm voting for Caitlin because yeah. even though she won, she could have won by a much bigger margin. So okay. that fumble kind of puts me in her, it, her on the, uh, the chair. I see. All right. Uh, Caitlin, who would you like to vote for? Well, I was originally going to vote for you. Okay. <laughs> Uh, you and still can if you like. <laughs> Whatever you feel like. Do I you actually think that I'm going to vote for Miss Sarah because she killed off a lot of heroes. Oh, that's a valid point. A lot of people <laughs> died. I? My cursed items. <laughs> Your cursed items. Sarah, who would you like to vote for today? Uh, hmm. Jason, I'm picking you because you were the harshest for the reviews, I think, weren't you? Mm, I yes. was. <laughs> I did give it the lowest score overall despite the fact that I love the game. That's totally fair. So to summarize so far, we have a vote for Caitlin, a vote for Sarah, a vote for me. Oh, that's interesting. Heartbreaker. There's a lot of power in this final <laughs> vote, because if it's a tie, we all have to eat. Or I could vote for just one person. But you know what? Gosh darn it. It was such a fun game. Who did I have to vote for to make it a tie? You, right? Mm. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to pay for that later. <laughs> but yeah, let's, let's just say, just to make it a team sport today, I'm going to vote for Janice, because no other reason than, gosh darn it, you just look the best today. So I'm oh. going to vote oh. for you. So we'll be back in a minute while we all suffer eating some delicious hot wings covered in a terrifying sauce. So don't go away. We'll be right back. And we're back. I'm super excited to once again be eating a wing covered with the Wingmaster Reaper sauce. Sarah and I have both experienced this before, but for Janice and Caitlin, this is the first time ever exploring heat of this nature. So uh, I'm excited. Uh, I know I'm going to enjoy it, but let's see how everybody else does. Any last words? I love you, Mom. <laughs> well, anyways, let's dive into it, and we'll see how we fare. Good luck, everyone. <sighs> I'm not licking my fingers. <laughs> You're not going to lick your fingers. No. Ah, there's that familiar burning sensation that I've grown to love over time. Caitlin, first impression? How was it? Was it really bad? Not too bad? Not supposed to be hot? Well, it does. <laughs> does it, it take some time? The thing is, it actually does. It's kind of more like a slow burn. So it'll be interesting in when we're off minutes? camera in a couple minutes to see what you think about right. it. Okay, my tongue's on fire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I just want to take the time to thank everyone. Uh, Janice, thank you for coming today. Caitlin, thank you for being a part of the episode. It's a pleasure to have you here. And Sarah, thank you for once again braving the adventure of the Hot Wing. I really enjoyed the game. Bargain Quest generally is one of my new favorite games. I love it. It takes a little bit of effort to learn, but once you do learn it, it's really worth the time you invest in it. Uh, and that's going to wrap it up for this week's episode. So thank you so much for joining us once again, and we hope to see you here again soon on Game Night in the Night. Bye-bye.